sight in the game to see the boxing boys. And it's time for another action packed interview here only on. The Squared Circle with the Sports Swami, only on TheBoxingVoice.com. And now join me on the line. This man here will be fighting December 29th. It's going to be a PBC on FS1 fight card. He'll be main eventing against the very durable Frankie DeAlba in a 10-round scrap only in uh, Sands Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I give you uh, the young knockout sensation. He's 15-0 with 11 knockouts. I give you Super O himself. I give you it's Omar Douglas. Uh, Omar Let's start off here with how big is this for you that they're trusting you to headline this card, that you're the, gr the main guy on the card, you're the guy selling the tickets, you're the guy that everybody's coming to watch. Right. Uh, it's a big opportunity for me. Uh, I've been waiting for an opportunity like this one all my life. I've been preparing for this all my life. And uh, I'm just ready to take advantage of my opportunity. So what do you see out of Frank, uh, out of Frank the Alba? I mean, he's... A from looking at him, he's a Puerto Rican from Reading, Pennsylvania. His last, his last fight out, you know, he took care of business here. As they say, he went. We just say he went. He went the six rounds, beat Jesus Lufe. His biggest win today is against uh, Bernardo Uribe, a six round knockout. What does he bring to the table? What's different about him than anybody else you faced so far? Nothing really, besides the fact that he has he has a, he has a decent record. Uh, he has the ability to win. He, uh, he has, he, you know, he's a winner. I, I can say he's a winner. That's the only difference. I look forward to taking care of business on coming the 29th. And like I said, I've been planning for this opportunity my whole life. He seems to be very durable, but people may say I've never been in with an opponent, you know, as, like him. But he never faced anyone like me. He is a southpaw by nature. He's a guy who who's left-handed, which we do on boxing is very tough. So for you, how tough is it finding guys who can mimic his style? To find you know, slick five foot six southpaws who are very tricky, like to move around, and like to throw punches at different angles. Right, it's uh, it's really not that hard. I mean, uh, my whole you know through the amateur through my amateur background, I fought a lot of guys that were southpaw. I mean, going all over the country fighting guys that were southpaw, and just uh, you know. And doing and doing my best work. Like uh, as a pro now, I think I fought about uh, four southpaws, and all of them went out in the first to the second round. So it's no being a southpaw and all that, and being being a little crafty. It doesn't it doesn't shock me. Uh, I've been around this game for a long time, and I've been boxing southpaws forever. So uh, yeah, no no you know no real shocker. Take us back to that last fight you had, Braulio Santos versus. And you, it was a 10 round scrap. Uh, the win is secondary. How big was it for you getting over that mental hump? You know, that first fight where you're going 10 rounds and you have a guy who, no matter how hard you hit him, he just won't go down. You can't finish him off. And you knocked him down early in rounds one and two. How, how did you keep composure and not just get head hungry, you know, from rounds four through, four through 10? I mean, it was it's one of them things where you can't you can't knock everybody out. Uh, some guys, you know, some guys do get up. Some some guys are adorable. And uh, I've always been in great shape. I've always been willing to go. You know, if it went there, I was always willing to go. Ten rounds. Uh, never had a I never had a problem with stamina or any of them things. I just wanted to get to that point, and I felt great afterwards. Uh, you know, I wasn't disappointed in myself because I didn't knock the guy out. I was uh, I was actually ecstatic because I fought a great fight and I went to 10 rounds. And the world, you know, I answered the question that the world was asking, you know, this knockout kick and he go 10 rounds and so forth and so on. And I did that and I had no problems. I felt great all the way through and I felt like I could have did another two rounds. What's the, what's the biggest difference in when you go, when you go, uh, Ten rounds and eight rounds. Is it all physical? Is it purely emotional? How? Why is it that some fighters and you and you've proven you were not one of them? Why is it that they can't go ten rounds? That after eight rounds, all of a sudden, it just looks like they're spent. It depends on how you fight the fight. I mean, it depends on what type of shape you in. Like a guy like me, I do a, a decent amount of road, road work for ten rounds with the best I could find in the area, or you know, the, you know, some of the best fighters in the world that you can name, top contenders. And all that I have box ten rounds with them guys. 
So uh, for me, it's, it's, it's not, uh, you know, I was prepared. And some, some guys don't prepare. Some guys are like, yeah, I knocked this guy out. Ain't no way we going 10. I prepare for every fight like I'm fighting for the world title. Regardless if the guy is 20 and over, the guy is over 20, I come in in my best condition. This uh, is very important for me to come in in tip-top shape. And I think a lot of guys underestimate, you know, underestimate that tend to be have a losing record, so forth and so on. And I'm not one of them guys. I come in and I get my very best every time, and I come in great shape every time, regardless of the opponent. I fight everybody. I guess the world title, and I, you know, like I fight like there's no tomorrow, because I know this is this is what I choose. This is what I chose to do as my career, and I can't let anybody stop me. Whether it's the Alba, whether it's you know any any top contender, I can't let anybody stop me from accomplishing my goals, which is becoming world champion. Who gave you the nickname Super O, and what what does Super O stand for? I mean, who, how did this all come about? The name Super O for me sparring in the gym. Uh, working with guys with to weights, knocking world to weights down and going 10 rounds with some of the best world to weights and junior world to weights in the area, with me only being 130 pounds. Uh, for a little guy, uh, I've been told uh, I pack a, a pretty a pretty big punch, and so that's how I developed the name Super O. Once again, we got it is Omar Douglas. We're talking all things, of course, PBC on FS1. We're talking training, sparring. We're talking Super O here. Lately, who have been some of the guys you've been sparring with? Who are some of the guys that either you're going to help work out with or you're going to, uh, or you're bringing in to help you grow as a fighter? Recently, I have worked with, like, um, who have I worked with? Hammer Hick Wendy, Eric Hunter, Lou Ray Robinson from Philadelphia, Danny Garcia, Jason Sosa, Kevin Farmer, uh, Anthony Burgess. The list goes on and on and on. Yeah, I boxed a lot of a lot of guys that are top contenders, and I get great work. What is that like when you spar with guys like Lundy and Danny Garcia, especially two guys who they fought on HBO, but one of them's a world champion, the other one has fought multiple times for world title. Both of them are a bit salty. Both of them know every trick, and both of them, if you if you feel, if they feel that you're dogging it, they will punish you. They will basically run you out of a gym. By just beating the hell out of you, how much did that help grow you as a fighter? That helped, that helped me grow a lot. I learned a lot of things from them guys. Uh, just being in there, working with them guys, and with them guys in sparring sessions is a great thing. Uh, like Hammer and Hank Lundy, he brings world class speed to the table, and uh, Danny brings smart power to the table. And you just learn how to like try, try your best to take their best attributes away. And work on you and work on yourself. I mean, as far as like defense, as far as offense, you know, using the jab, boxing them guys, giving them movement, walking them, trying to walk them guys down with a decent jab, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, you learn a lot from them guys, especially like fighting on the inside. Amateurs is totally totally different from the pros. So guys do little tricks on the inside where they able to hold and hit you at the same time. Uh, some guys might uh, throw little hip shots and. You know, use their shoulders to push off, and it's just different stuff you learn from working with guys on a world class level. So for you to win, win impressively, you get you know the the gears churning and the movement going for a title fight. What's the key to victory for you come December 29th? He is to come out and do what I do best, my jab, and just dominate from the beginning to the end. No weak spots, no you know, just uh, be defensively responsible and just dominate the fight. One of, one of my key factors in every fight is to work the body. So, of course, and then that's one of the things I made my name off, too. So, of course, I'm going to come out and use a jab, and I'm going to definitely work the body and just set him up. If you go to sleep early, if you go to sleep late, you're going to sleep. There you have it. Once again, I give you it's Omar Douglas. So, Omar, where can the fans check you out at? Where is your Twitter page, Instagram, Facebook? Where can the uh, fans hit you up at? On Twitter, I'm Supero underscore 130KP. On uh, on Facebook, I'm Omar Super O Douglas, and on Instagram, I'm Holly Touted underscore Super O. Well, there you have it. Once again, we got it is uh, Super O himself, Omar Douglas. We come back. We got a whole lot more here. It's the Squared Circle with the Sports Swami only on the Boxing Voice.